Hi, so today we're going to be talking about amino acid degradation. And three of these steps are going to be transaminations, which is just the interconversion of amino acids to alpha keto acids, then deamination, which there's two types, oxidative deamination and non-oxidative deamination. The oxidative deamination are going to be using NAD plus and FAD plus, which are oxidizing agents, to take up that amino group, deamination, and non-oxidative processes. And then ammonia assimilation, which just simply means putting ammonia into another molecule. And this is going to be done by different enzymes, glutamate dehydrogenase, glutamine synthetase, and carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1. And we're going to be talking about all of these in detail. So there are a few structures that I think are important in uh, when talking about amino acid degradation. And so let's look at a few of them. First over here we have our, an amino acid because of the backbone and because of the R group being a methyl group we know that's alanine. And what I want to show you here is that we, if we use the same backbone of this right here and we just add a double bond O instead of that NH3, we're going to get something that we're very familiar with, with and that is pyruvate. And remember that pyruvate is going to have three carbons because we split that glucose into two pyruvate. So and glucose has six carbons, so we're going to, pyruvate is going to have three carbons. Now if we look over here, we have another amino acid. And knowing that there's one CH2 in a carboxylic acid, we know that it's aspartate. And if we do the same thing we did with the alanine and pyruvate, and we take that amino group and we convert it into a double bond O, we're going to have something that we're also familiar with, and that is oxaloacetate. Oops. Oxaloacetate. And remember that when we add oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA together, acetyl-CoA having two carbons, we get citrate, which has six carbons. And remember that through the TCA cycle, we lose two CO2s, or two carbons, and again, we make oxaloacetate. So if you recall from the TCA cycle, this is a structure of citrate, which has six carbons, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. And through several steps, we're going to lose a CO2, right? And we're going to get alpha ketoglutarate, which is going to have five carbons because we lost one, right? It's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And then again, through uh, several more steps, we're going to lose another CO2. And so we're going to be left with oxaloacetate, which it again has one, two, three, and four carbons. So that's another easy way to remember this. You don't necessarily need to, do this, need to know the structure of citrate, but if you know that it has six carbons, and in the TCA cycle we lose one, make alpha ketoglutarate, and another one, make oxaloacetate, that will help you remember the structures of these um, components of the TCA cycle. So on this side, I've redrawn the backbone of alpha ketoglutarate, and again, we know that over here is going to be our double bond O to become alpha ketoglutarate. But what happens if we switch that double bond O to an amino group? Well, now we know we have an amino acid backbone, and this amino acid in particular is glutamate, right? Glutamate. So what happens if to this glutamate backbone, backbone, so let's say we kept that NH3 over here, and we added another NH3 up here to that carboxylic acid, we make yet again another amino acid by adding an amino group, and that would be glutamine. So if you know the similarities between the structures and you know how to make the different ones by adding amino groups or adding double bond O's, then you will know and, and it will help you a lot with the different reactions in amino acid degradation.